on the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Talking Catholic. Happy Easter, Mike. I'm here with you, and I'm excited to be back. Happy Easter, Carrie. So nice. Actually, I'm exhausted. It was a very, 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 mm-hmm. very busy uh, Holy Week, and uh, but it was as wonderful as I've ever remembered it. So true, so true. I actually saw more posts uh, this Easter Monday of pastors about how exhausted they are than I ever have on social media. I was like, wow, that really makes a lot of sense because me as a layperson who just has minimal work to do to prepare, uh, you know, our, our OCIA candidates and catechumens and um, the, the little behind the details that go on mm-hmm. in Holy Week and uh, the True to One particularly, I was tired. So I was like, man, these pastors that are saying masses, homilies and pre- preparations, church decorations, all of that, they, they got to be spent. So... But you know what? We're feeling it, but they're feeling it too. I went to five parishes over the from uh, Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, mm-hmm. and I got to tell you, every parish I went into, the pastors were elated. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know if that was just because their boss was there, but um, they, I'm telling you, across the board, they yeah. were absolutely having a blast, and and you could you could actually like it was it's a strange feeling because I've covered a lot of Holy Weeks over the last eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say this was probably the most joyous one I'd ever been a part of. Like, I, like even the music yeah. sounded better this year. I, I, I wish I could tell you what cultural thing is going on right now. That I think it's a movement of the Holy Spirit because must have been. I was talking on Easter Monday as well. Um, actually, it was Easter Sunday because I, I go to the vigil and then I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't go. To, did you have a Mass Easter Sunday too? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So that was my, my day kind of off <laughs> as well. <laughs> and... Uh, on Easter Sunday, I was talking with some some friends, some priest friends and such, and we were saying how beautiful the vigils were. And I said, it just hit differently this year. Like, it was a different kind of joy, enthusiasm, excitement. Um, and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. So it's something across the board. It's definitely a movement of the Holy Spirit uh, well, this time. Well, I, I, have, I have no argument with that because, you know, I rely on the Holy Spirit uh, more in my career now than I ever did in mm-hmm. the secular world. So I have a much greater appreciation for the power of the Holy Spirit. And I agree with you. But, you know, we could ask somebody else who is uh, joining us in the sure. early we part have, of this. We have one of those tired pastors we have, with us. We have a tired pastor with us. Exactly <laughs> yes. right. And he's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> he is. We, we have, uh, so introduce him. Yes, so we have with us Father John Rossi. He is the pastor of St. Bridget University Parish and also the chaplain of the Newman House here at Rowan Catholic Campus Ministry. It's great to be with you today. Thanks, Thanks. Father. No, we're, we're excited. Um, this is great. You know, we, we get to, I record down in, uh, in Newman House with some great regularity. We can't get Carrie out of here, which is a, which is a great thing for, mm-hmm. for, for Newman House. So it's nice that you could uh, join us. This is sweet. Actually, and, actually it's kind of funny. I, I remember our first time recording with Father, you might remember this. I think it was on the Advent season, probably like 10 years ago. Yeah. Now, well, now not that not long 10 ago. Years ago. But five, five years, years ago, ago probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember recording with you. Now here we are, Easter season and working together it's like like time just it just goes by it's so crazy right that was back at our lady of peace it i think was. you had a it studio was. in the basement yeah somewhere. it was quite some time ago yeah, yeah it was but that was a that was a great conversation we always like doing the the seasonal conversations the seasonal episodes uh, cuz we always learn something new and it would, to that point, if anyone did not hear the Father Stephen Robbins episode, um, I, Phenomenal. I'm going to cut out the 10 minutes of us bantering beforehand. So people just listen to Father Stephen Robbins. Mm-hmm. He did a great job. We've done those seasonal episodes many times over mm-hmm. the years. And that may, that's a, that's a top two. That's an award winning yeah, one. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sending that in. It was so well done. Was really I actually, good. I rarely do this. I texted him after listening to it. I said, great job on the Talking Catholic podcast. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, I listen to them regularly as much as possible. And um, when someone definitely does a well above and beyond, it was like, oh, I have to just tell him. It, it was yeah, so good. He did. And I even sent it to our students and said, listen to this. Like, you're going to learn a lot about the true to him. Yeah, yeah, we're going to, we may never do another uh, Holy Week episode again. I'm just going to rerun that every every single year. So, Father Rossi, are you as tired as all the other pastors out there? I don't think so. I recharged it a little bit. My day off was on Tuesday, and I (laughs) had a good day yesterday to rest up with all this rain. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. that that was good. Not much you could do outside right now. No, that is true. I think that, you know what, you might be right. I think the Holy Spirit was looking after us that way. Stay inside, get Mm -hmm. your rest, take some naps. Mm -hmm. In my case, I did laundry. Um, So, was it a success? Holy Week at St. Bridget's It was Parish. wonderful. Really? Yeah. That is good to hear. I think it was a successful Holy Week at Easter because it was a great Lent. Yeah. I think we really 
lived Lent well. Mm-hmm. We really got into it this year with all the things going on in, in our par- parish and the Newman House yeah. ministry. Yeah, we had a great opportunity here. Um, and I know you don't like it when I talk about other apps and podcasts, but you know I don't. It was um, the Hallow app. Um, we had a wonderful opportunity to have the subscription to that at a very, very low, affordable cost of one dollar for the entire season of Lent. And just like they said, it would it cut off on April first. I tried to go into the uh, <laughs> Divine Mercy chaplet to do my novena, and boom, it was not accessible. But um, but to have it for one dollar over that course and listen through uh, the Pray Forty Challenge, He leadeth me, particularly yeah. um, meditation meditating on that was just phenomenal and our, our parishioners our students everyone and that was a lot of great father. feedback yeah, yeah. I, I, say. I i heard the same thing my wife my wife did it and i heard other parishes were doing it as well and i heard nothing but great things across the board so that was i mean, I don't know if that, you know, my jade itself as a PR guy, I don't know if that was a plan by Hallow to, you know, really get people interested in the app. It probably was. But man, I think it, I think to your point, uh, to the, both of your points, I think it really served Lent well this year that it people did. had access to something like right. that. It gave everyone a focus, at least here, I have to say, mm-hmm. the students and some of the parishioners and myself included, mm-hmm. I didn't miss a day. I was listening Same. to those reflections and it really just centered me on what we were doing and how important it is to enter into that holy mm-hmm. season to get ready for Easter. Yeah. yeah. We played it around the house a lot. We would we pray a rosary daily here at certain times and then after rosary we'd come out and we'd put it on the the speaker and just kind of have the house quiet and listen for that 10 or 15 20 minutes whatever it was. And um if it wasn't playing at the house there was a conversation in our group chat going on like who listened today? It was so great. I I recommend listening. So really just served as well as Father said for a Lent. And and when you have that kind of coming into Holy Week, that that your that spiritual tone has been set now yeah. for uh, the 40 days, like you are so ready and so excited for um, all that's to come at yeah. that Easter Mass, at, especially for us at the Easter Vigil, which was just phenomenal. We had nine people make their sacraments. Um, six of them were, were students uh, here at Rowan. Um, well, one one is a student in quotes. We'll hear from her shortly. But uh, <laughs> um, six of the college age, and yeah. and then three adult parishioners. And it yeah, was a fa- a, fa- a fairly senior person too, right? Yes, yeah. It was a well, it was a married couple, and and, and yes. Oh, little, so that was the, what the deal yes, was. Yeah, okay, yeah, a little more senior senior ended. Yeah, that was it. Was it was funny because I you you do a great job, Carrie, of always posting photos from the from the parish, and so I couldn't be there because you know I was doing the bishops. Mm-hmm. And as I'm look looking at the vigil photos, I went, oh yeah, kid, kid, kid. What? Whoa, whoa, there's <laughs> there's a older fellow there. I was like that. That made me very yeah, happy. Not traditional <laughs> college student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they're from the parish and they've been attending mass uh, regularly since last Easter. The yeah. Easter was their kind of anniversary of uh, their first Catholic mass. Um, um, one one was already baptized Catholic and one was not, and so um, the the wife needed communion and confirmation, and the husband full, fully initiated baptism, communion, and confirmation. So it was really joyous uh, for them as a couple to to be traveling through this uh, this whole year of taking classes together. That's really sweet. I'm not sure. I I don't know that I've ever known a couple in your in your time as a priest father had you had have you had that sort of situation where you've either baptized or did the full book? not a couple together yeah. usually I, they're I've coming, seen sponsor yeah, yeah. Sponsoring. yeah I've seen yeah. sponsor and, mm-hmm. and candidate but never together which that's is, really unique yeah you know, what, you, you know what that's called Carrie that's called a feature idea for the Catholic Star Herald to, to look into I'm gonna, where is Jennifer <laughs> I, I know <laughs> well, she is currently in Germany I saw that yeah she's enjoying herself <laughs> but uh, when she gets back I, that article, like we a feature story for a future uh, so, that article, sounds good. if not a future podcast yeah and it's really beautiful how um, this other family really I- invited them into the church I mean it's evangelization at its core for sure um, and bringing them to mass and and, and being there and it was their sponsors that's really sweet another married couple so it, it is a good story. It Look is. So you know, it's feel funny. Free to we, we use it. <laughs> I think we've mentioned this on the podcast before, and uh, Father Austin, we even mentioned it with you. The um, the fact that the Holy Week is such a is such a, a peculiar week in the in the Catholic mm-hmm. Church, and not in the not from a spiritual standpoint. It's beautiful and blessed in the, from a spiritual path, uh, standpoint. But when you think about it, you know it's. It's a solemn. There's a, a lot of sadness, and you know, there's some some terrible things that happen. You know, from both a human perspective and a divine perspective. Well, maybe not from a divine perspective, but then there are these moments of absolute joy that it, that occur mm-hmm. during Holy Week that I I absolutely Even Holy love. Thursday. Yeah, I mean, it's like in the midst of 
we're just about to Jesus is about to is betrayed he is betrayed in in that in that mass and then but yet the Gloria was sung you know yeah during it it was just like this kind of break in the in the solemnness uh, to have some joy the, the institution of the Eucharist institution of the priesthood yeah. you know and then kind of crashing down for the next day of that solemn time of uh, Good Friday. And that was really beautiful. I would have to say something differently about this Good Friday as well. We're really blessed at St. Bridget's to have a piece of the, a fragment of the true cross mm-hmm. and uh, to venerate that. And the and just people's um, solemnness, uh, even their emotion to see and witness. Even my own son, I didn't tell him what to do. I just said, go up and, you know, you can mm-hmm. give Jesus a kiss or whatever. He like genuflected all perfectly and like put his hand on the relic and then like I did some form of uh, kissing to his feet and I was like oh my gosh like I wanted to burst into tears right there it was just overflowed my heart just to see that but even just our students and the elderly parishioners and everyone going up and showing their own form of veneration of the cross it was really beautiful yeah I love Holy Week. I, kind of sad it's over. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Let's enjoy Easter now. We're, we're gonna, uh, we gotta yeah. love this Easter. Joy. No, no, yeah, we got we got fifty days of joy. Yeah, for the, that's for right. That just just really, and I re- I really that's my intent this year is uh, for that Easter season. You know, for for all our listeners who think that Easter Sunday is a is a day, it's it's an entire season and it's longer than Lent. Um, you know, we really need to to mm-hmm. lean into the joy of uh, of the Easter season and the fact that it continues on and on and on for weeks. Uh, so let's uh, let's make sure that, as, as Bishop said in his homily uh, during the vigil, during the vigil mass, you know, keep Christ risen with us. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's it's in your heart the entire time. One of my favorite quotes by Saint John Paul II: "We are Easter people, and Hallelujah is our song." So we we are Easter people. Like, well you know, said. Always. Now speaking of unique um, Catholic icons. Uh, like the ones that we've uh, mentioned recently. This is actually a very special episode because uh, we're going to do a movie review, mm-hmm. uh, a movie that I have not watched. Uh, oh, so I, well, well I this will get you to watch alert. it. Spoiler yeah. <laughs> alert. I, I, listen, I, I consider it a, I consider, no, no, that's fine. This person's a real person. I, I know I know the deal with her, so I, I have, but I just haven't, haven't seen the movie yet. But I will say, keep in mind, it did take me mm, four years to, to watch the first three seasons of The Chosen. So, you know, eventually I get there. It takes a little while. but it's okay. I'm, I'm actually saving season four when it comes out on streaming uh, mm-hmm. for Advent since I watched uh, the previous seasons all this Lent, which I found, found I, great. I actually haven't seen The Chosen, so if that makes you feel better. I haven't either. Yeah. I, <laughs> there I'll, you go. I'll be honest, I was resisting it, and yeah. then I was having a conversation with my boss, Father Hughes, about Lent, and I hadn't really thought of anything for uh, to, to do for Lent. He's like, Mike, ah, there you go. sit down and watch The Chosen throughout Lent. And I said, okay, I'll do it. And I because yeah, you like to binge Netflix I do. Stuff. I'm a, I'm yeah. a binger. See, that's the reason I don't watch it because I don't like to Well, what it. I did was I, I walked on my treadmill every night oh, and I nice. watched it and I got a lot of walking in because I, I was told that they were like 45 minute episodes. Some of them were like an hour and 15, an hour and 30. So oh, I got a lot of exercise in, so, which I wasn't anticipating. That's a good way to kill two birds with one stone. But I was so, I got I got really annoyed with Father Hughes a couple of times because, you know, I'm jaded and you know, things like that. And there were some episodes and some scenes that really... Like I had a visceral reaction to, and I did, and you know, I was like, and I got, I, and it really made it made me like look at in, in, sort of look inside myself and decide, you know, what what I was doing and what mm. I could be doing better, and I didn't want to make any changes. So I keep, well, that shows it was a good lens. It for was, you, Mike. it was a good lens for me. Father Hughes uh, coerced me into watching the chosen. And there, were, there were parts of it that spoke to me, but that is not why we are. We're not, no, re- we're not, re- we're not yeah, reviewing the that's chosen. That's another podcast. That's for another right. Day. We'll do that another time. Uh, no, we're reviewing Cabrini. Yes. The new movie Cabrini, and we have Father John Rossi on to help with that, mm-hmm. along with two other guests who can now turn their microphones on and let us know who they are. To my right is I'm Sam Brown from Gloucester Catholic. Hi, Sam. And Sam, you are a sophomore at Gloucester Catholic. I am. That's right. All right, welcome, and, Sam. And I've known Sam for many years. Uh, she and my son went to school together all through grade school, so big fan of the Sam Brown and her family. And she's also from our parish. That she's is an true. altar server there, and uh, been a faithful attendee of our parish, St. Bridget's. So Altar server extraordinaire, as a matter yeah. of fact. She's been in many of the bishops' uh, uh, masses where she's been the altar server. Good stuff. And also with us is... Uh, hi, I'm Candice. I'm freshly Catholic uh, this Easter vigil. <laughs> uh, Carrie taught me RCIA and 
Father Rossi uh, gave me all three of my sacraments, so that's very Congratulations. Yay. And you the were chrism the chrism still smells fresh on her forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Freshly minted can- uh, Catholics, mm-hmm. always chrism. the nicest smelling. And she's quite joyful as well. She's uh, you, you always mint the, uh, the peppiest Catholics, Carrie, so good job with that. <laughs> Try. So, um, but there's, but it's a peculiar connection here, right? Like, um, yeah, not, so, not a Rowan student. Yeah. Yeah. Can, go no, ahead, Candace. I, uh, no, I don't go here. I just live in the area. I live about, about 10, 15 minutes from, from, uh, Rowan. And in a, I have a friend that goes to Rowan and in a strange circumstance, I, you know, that, that person is friends with, uh, the Newman, the president of the Newman house, the president of Rowan Catholic. And, uh, and so our president uh, invited me out to my first mass. I, I was already considering becoming Catholic and was sort of just putting it off. And and so I went to my first mass last September, and I've been going every every week since, and every 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 day since, or not every day, but um, you know, sometimes it's daily mass. Yeah, right. occasionally, it's occasionally, yeah. not every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, here and there, um, but yeah, consistently and. Uh, was basically didn't hesitate to sign up for RCIA and uh, very glad that I that I did. <laughs> she was a great student, absorbed the information well, and uh, already knew a lot coming in as well. There was a fair amount that um, she was able to really just expand on as we taught it in the class, which was really always good to have students like that in your class. I picked a great name too for confirmation. Do oh. you want to share a little oh, bit about yeah. that? Oh yeah, Saint Hildegard. <laughs> oh, there's there's a mouthful right there. What 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 drew drew you to Saint Hildegard? I'm sorry. Oh, what drew what drew you to Saint Hildegard as your uh, um, as your saint? So I wasn't initially drawn to Saint Hildegard because <laughs> I didn't know anything about her, and so uh, I had initially picked a different saint. And in like the last like two weeks before I was supposed to get uh, you know baptized and confirmed and all that, uh, I you know just started like you know watching all these YouTube videos about her and like her theology and the, like listening to the music that she wrote and and the languages that she that she um uh that she wrote down that 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 previously didn't exist so she you know uh i think it's uh purported that it's like divine revelation that she was given these 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 words and and like her her beautiful paintings of like her conception of of the universe and 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 god and all of that and she's just like this total polymath like i think she's good at everything and (laughs) uh i just i really really like her and and uh as as a aspiration i don't think that's a bad one i think i think well, I like her and and feel very drawn to her. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned that because in all my time, I've never heard of Saint Hildegard. So oh, yeah, she's now I have somebody also, to check it out. She's actually a doctor of the church. Oh, yeah. no, I yeah. really gotta and check her out. I'm really good with natural remedies. Oh. She has like a whole book on them. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so if you're into Cook that, book yeah. slash uh, medical. Yeah. Uh, oh, she's, compilation. She's pretty awesome I do. I do enjoy uh, doctors of the church. I think that's one of the great titles that yeah. the church provides. She's one of the four female doctors. I will have to check mm-hmm. her out. Saint she Hildegard. was really loved by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and I think Saint Hildegard did a great job of merging theology and different forms of art. Yes, mm-hmm. like hmm. finding different ways to explain the faith in unique ways using nature and it's yeah. amazing you know yeah. it's, wow. it's really that's the first yeah. time I heard someone take that name but I was really yeah. happy yeah and it was yeah. like a last minute it was like two weeks not even before maybe it, a week it was the it was the I think it was the just, Monday before the Monday of Holy Week yeah it's just like <laughs> ah, I really like her I'm like you want to change her name give me an answer so I can send this email or not <laughs> and, and we did and it was perfect and I think you know it was yeah. you, God timed it all perfectly to make it work out. St. Joseph's great. We love him. I mean, who yeah, doesn't? Yeah, that was my but, first pick. Um, yeah. St. Hildegard definitely suits you well. Yeah, it certainly. I, I still love St. Joseph. I just It feels more correct this way, mm-hmm. I think. Sam, you're, you're two years away, two years removed from confirmation. Do you remember who your confirmation name is? Um, I took the confirmation name Carmelina for Our Lady Mount Carmel. Oh, very, very nice. nice. I, I don't Another think I've ever heard. Devotion. I've heard of her, obviously, but I don't think I'd ever heard of anyone taking Carmelina yeah. before. Great name, great choice, Sam. Yeah. I would, I would expect nothing less from you. Thank you. 
Uh, so let's talk about the movie but a little bit. Another scene. Another I, great let's go, scene. <laughs> another great female but, scene. Here yeah, we are. Matter of fact, we'll probably get uh, a very annoyed uh, email from our uh, Talking Saints uh, podcast host oh, that yeah. we're. I'm sure, I'm sure they might want to do they something. They should do a piggyback on this and do a Talking Saints on They should. Cabrini. But they've actually got the entire year figured out. So, yeah, so who knows? So maybe, I don't know. Maybe they did. But yeah, so let's talk about the movie Cabrini, which yes. I know nothing about. The, and to be quite frank, the only thing I know about Mother Cabrini is Cabrini College. That's okay. Which is which is closing. Go, which is going away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. It's so sad. <laughs> I actually know a, a bunch of uh, alumnus from there, and I said, uh, I said, you know, if that movie had come out two years earlier, I wonder if that would have spurned yeah. some interest. It would have been nice. But but let's talk about the the Cabrini movie first mm-hmm. of all. Where did everybody see Cabrini? Okay, so um, the Angel Studios who put it out mm-hmm. did a phenomenal job in uh, promoting it leading up to it. I mean, I would see it in my news feeds constantly for a while now. And even prior to that, um, last October of 22, I believe it was, they did a pre-showing at different theaters. And one of them was in Hamilton. And I have some friends that attended that. Father Rivera helped put it together, actually. Mm-hmm. And the producer was there present to get feedback from Italian-Americans on what oh, they thought of the movie. Idea. And so I had some friends that saw it there and, and said, oh, it's really great. And then I didn't hear anything about it. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I remember seeing an article in the Star Herald um, about it uh, coming you know, into theaters. And I was like, is this the same movie that was out like in 22, like fall 22? And I checked with my friend and sure enough it was. So I've been seeing things then being promoted through Instagram and Facebook um, ads. One of them was tickets at $5 a piece. Oh, cool. And you could get up to 10. I was like, this father, can we get these like 50 bucks for 10 people to go to a movie? Yeah. It's like unheard of. So we picked them up those 10 and um, our students took nine of them, and Father Rossi took one, and um, he saw it on his day off, and we saw it as a student group, nine of us, at um, Voorhees. The reason was um, you had to pre like put your ticket codes in to reserve uh, your seats, okay. mm-hmm. and it was spring break the week it came out. And there I'm like, go. okay, I know how these Catholic movies go. <laughs> they go like like day by day in the theaters. If they're doing well, they keep it. If they're not, they're not, you yeah. know? And I, was, I would have loved to have seen it in Washington Township, United Artists, with the nice reclining seats. But um, because it was spring break, they didn't have it showing more in advance, like a week out. But Voorhees did have it a week out. So we booked for March uh, 18th, which was the Monday after spring break. And there's a group of us, myself, and uh, some students and uh, some local uh, people that attended. And uh, it was really great. So I saw it in Voorhees. Well, that sounds great. For five bucks. Awesome. (laughs) But Sam saw it twice. Yes, yeah, so right? she wins. <laughs> yeah, I did. I went with Miss um, Silver. She led like a group of students. We went during school um, to the theater in Somerdale. But I was sitting next to my friend, and it was really cold in the theater. So I fell asleep like the last 25 minutes of the oh, movie. No. <laughs> but from what I saw, I was telling my mom, I was like, it's so good. We have to go like see it because I'm coming on a podcast to talk about it. <laughs> and so we went and seen it yesterday. Um, same place, same like theater and everything, and I got to see the whole thing, and I jotted notes down. She for took it. notes oh, while she was watching it too. It was, it too. It was too. really dark, yeah. and I took notes. That's so great! <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear all the notes. <laughs> all right, so since I don't know anything about Mother Cabrini, and I certainly don't know anything about the movie, who would like to give an explainer of, explainer of who Mother Cabrini is? Okay, I'll do my best. Who is Mother well, Cabrini? Sam, Sam has the notes. Maybe. <laughs> um, so she's an Italian immigrant. Okay. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Yes, she was an Italian immigrant, but she um, was in Italy with her sisters, and she wanted to be a missionary. And she went to the Pope and asked, and she really wanted to go um, to the east. To China. To China, east, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the Pope basically said, you can't. But he said... I know a lot of Italian, I'm paraphrasing the Pope. I think it was Leo the 13th that was the Pope. And uh, he basically said, your work is more, she begged and begged and and he was resistant and um, they were really resistant. And I think she had to go two times before he actually said yes. And when um, he did say yes, he said, there's Italian immigrants in New York who are in need of you. Start there and then you can go east. And so she took a boat ride and it's funny, I, in my in my own little world, Carrie world, not thinking of the early 1900s, um, that it was boats. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's gonna fly in a plane there, and then I see the boat. I'm like, wait a minute, oh my gosh, and like the conditions like sure. on the boat were difficult. And um, also, a really important aspect of Mother Cabrini's life was that, and they kept doing flashbacks to it, that she had a um, 
a drowning situation as a child and um, she survived through that and was really praying through that and in her surviving um, had some lingering effects of um, upper respiratory and lung issues and you see her coughing throughout it and her health failing at different parts of it and during that time um, of on the boat and all that the conditions were just terrible you know and even when she got to New York the conditions were not the greatest and so seeing all that she did just to get here and to serve the people she came with uh, five other nuns I believe it was with her to come and serve the Italian immigrants in New York City and yeah. when they got here um, they were not well received at all you know, yeah. well received at all and they were in the slums in New York um, and uh, what was it called? Five Points, I believe, yeah, was the area it was called. And um, there was prostitutes going on there. There was um, just all kinds of uh, orphans, people, the children living in in the sewers and on the streets and without without family and, and who had died, who had passed away, who was just left there. And it was just really difficult conditions. And uh, she started with really nothing, really nothing, and um, worked into a all of these amazing orphanages and schools not only in new york city but all around the world um at this point now and so that's it in a short you know um but the movie really says it all like the whole story of her life i know father do you have anything to add that i missed maybe along the way key points if i understood correctly i think it was unique in that she was the first woman to have a missionary order to okay. go abroad that is true because that's why the Vatican was so hesitant. They would say, well, we can send an order of priests to, a, to China or to a foreign country, and they can start a mission, but we can't send a group of religious uh, sisters. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so she was asking for something, kind of pushing the envelope. Mm -hmm. And um, she really stepped up and did what she had to do and really gave a joyful witness as a missionary to the United States. And then it spread throughout the whole world. Yeah. Yeah, and she... Um I remember the one scene from uh, to kind of piggyback on what Father said being the first missionary woman missionary the Pope said to her basically what happens here for you is going to determine if other women can be missionaries or not mm -hmm. you know and it was like almost like this weight of it like if I, if I fail like this is never going to happen and we look at people like St. Mother Teresa and all these other missionaries that because of her paving the way and I think that's why the producers really took um, to meet the general population of of moviegoers it wasn't really for the it was for the Catholic it was I mean we love it we enjoy it but it's really for everyone and they really took the the stance on um, you know, women empowering women yeah. and you see that woven throughout the movie um, you also see um, they released it intentionally on um, International Women's Day, mm -hmm. you know, March 8th. They did a lot of like key advertising in that sense so that it could reach the unchurched. And I think it was really genius in what they did in that. Candace, you had, we had a great conversation about that here, about how the, the producers chose to do that. And if you wanted to add anything else, because we were talking about that here at Newman the one day. Yeah, yeah. So I went and saw the movie actually on the same day as you and the people from Rowan just earlier in the day. That's right. Um, because my mom wanted to see it and my mom is not Catholic. Um, so she had saw some like Facebook advertisements or something. And so she, you know, she wanted to see the movie. We went out and we, we saw it and, and it really was perfect for somebody like her where, um, you know, she, she did, I think initially want to watch the movie because like, oh, it's about like some strong woman but now she knows the life of a saint that she otherwise wouldn't have known and i think that the movie is something that is so well done in that it can be enjoyed by anybody and that the target audience really is maybe you know a lukewarm catholic who has maybe fallen into like the trappings of feminism or like you know your like atheist cousin who is really into history or and like these people can be drawn into this movie they don't have to be catholic to realize that it's interesting and they can watch it and now they're they're one step closer to to knowing about the church that they otherwise wouldn't have been um and i think that the movie is well done in in the fact that it does emphasize the the strength of women but also the differences between men and women in a way and and through doing that i think that makes the movie in and of itself not feminist yeah. okay so yeah. because i can see that you know, the, there's there's particular things that Cabrini would not have been able to achieve if she were a man. Mm -hmm. And and there's particular things that, um, you know, 
they they have different strengths, and those strengths are highlighted throughout the movie. Well, it's it's funny because famously in the Catholic Church, it's you know well documented about um, uh, religious women who have had a great impact on popes to move them in, uh, into a direction they might not otherwise want to move. So it's it's very important. So Sam, from as as the chief note taker, um, so as Carrie mentioned earlier, um, uh, this movie is put out by Angel Studios, who by the way puts out the, the Chosen, That's and right. is particularly adept now at creating you know these sort of religious stories. Um, I'm curious, you as a as a younger woman, what uh, what did you take away from the movie? I just kind of wrote down like everything that I thought was like really cool that she did, mm-hmm. and um, piggybacking off what Candace said, um, she literally said to like this mayor of this town, she was like, "Med could never do what we do," because mm-hmm. he was like, "You would have been a great man." She was like, "No," she's like, "No," because yeah. men can never do what I can do. That is true. Yeah, but. Yeah. That's so true. Her motherly love to the to the orphans yeah. in itself. I mean, there were so many other aspects, but um, being the mother, the spiritual mother that they needed, um, I think that was probably part of her comment, yeah. and, and so many other aspects as well. But that just being one of yeah, the main ones. Yeah, she was ones. really mothering. At one part in the movie, these like two boys, they're trying to steal bread from them that they were making for dinner. She's like, "Well, you boys can steal bread from me, or you can just come and join us and eat." whatever they were eating for dinner and the younger boy's like hey that sounds good like <laughs> let's do that yeah and yeah. those are two of the main that was the little boy enzo yeah. and, and the other Paulo, yeah and Paulo, yeah you know hearing actually hearing sam say that i'm reminded of another podcast we did recently that unfortunately you weren't able to be on but when we interviewed the cfrs mm-hmm. you know they talk they have this winter shelter down mm-hmm. in atlantic city and we asked them like what was what made it special and actually they said something very similar which was you know they don't need more money they need more sisters because only the, their charism mm-hmm. is what makes their their homeless shelter unique mm-hmm. and that they're able to like work with people in a very unique way so hearing something from 100 years ago and then yes, and then hearing over. it modern mm-hmm. times now that there's still some truth to that that religious women really do make an impact in ways that nobody else could yeah yeah so true um and you see that throughout the entire movie and i think that's what really Moved my heart as a you know as a mother you know not a religious woman but a lay person, but just to see their love poured out in in so much. I mean they were risking their lives coming to the United States. I mean they laid their life on the line at that time in that time period. I I just looked up it was 1889 that they actually came over, and um, and at that time period like and I didn't realize this. I'm not a big history buff. I'm gonna just lay that out there. But like how. The Italian immigrants were not well received at all at that time. I mean, they were just. Oh yeah. I right. did not know that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like thinking, like, oh my gosh, my great or great great. <laughs> I'm just trying to do the math real quickly. Grandparents and some ancestors of mine came over at some point, and were here, and were treated that way. And I'm like, wow, that wow, I did not know. Like, they had to endure so much, um, such hardship at that time, and so. And she even said, we're not here just for the Italians. We're here for all, you know, mm-hmm. like, and, and it wasn't limited to. And the, the first hospital that she wanted to make, and by the end of the movie, that's what you see come to fruition, that she had this vision for. She said, it's not just for the Italians. It's for all, you know, yeah. this, this hospital. And that was, she was just so driven by that. But because they were, they, they were dying because they were not receiving the same treatment that others were receiving was her real uh, focus. And just think, you know, 20, 30 years prior to that, it was the Irish coming over. And then they had, you know, come into a place where they were in a good place. And, you know, she wanted that for the Italians, but she, she wanted it equally because they were all children of God and that's yeah. the way she saw them. And that was really just, just something that kind of rose to the top for me. Yeah, and I like to hear each person's, maybe if you could think of one of your favorite parts of the movie or highlight um, was a question that I have. Because I will say for me, um, it was the point where with Paolo and um, Enzo, which is these two young men who you follow kind of throughout the movie. Actually, the very opening scene is Paolo um, Mm -hmm. with his mother dying in a little push cart that he's driving, like pushing her all around, trying to find somebody to help her, a doctor to help her. And she ends up passing. And it's because nobody would would take his mother in to try to help them help her in the hospital. And she was just on her deathbed. It's also mentioned that beforehand, before his mother got sick, his father killed himself. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So he was one of the orphans then that you kind of followed through. And um, so he's in this opening scene and you're like, what's going on here? You know, um, it's really beautifully done, actually, from an artistic point of view, as someone who is artistic. And I really love um, 
cinematography i've always had like a, a great like just joy of watching movies that are done well really well done really well done from that angle well actually that's the question that was actually gonna be the question i asked everybody which is um a lot of times uh christian movies come across a little amateurish mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately because I, nice I think way to put it. well they're, they're <laughs> done by well-meaning people yes. who may not have no, the cinematography skills to really put together yeah. a great but but this movie like looked and felt like a real oh yes it yeah, was it just... genuinely so interesting like there wasn't a single point in the movie where you were bored it was two and a half hours long it didn't feel like that you were just so drawn into it it was mm -hmm. so visually beautiful the acting was so good mm -hmm. like it, it it wasn't corny at all which is like another thing that would like You're for right. example mm -hmm. like turn away somebody like my mom or she'd be <laughs> like "Ooh, there you know getting yeah. all touchy-feely about something and <laughs> yeah. instead of just showing you like the raw emotion right yeah. like, you know and, and so it was really good on that front where they did a lot of, of of visual showing you of things instead of a verbalization of it which i think makes all the difference in in the quality and enjoyability of it yeah, yeah, yeah. even though i uh, fell asleep during the first one <laughs> we're not gonna hold that I, against yeah you. <laughs> it surprised me that i fell asleep because up until that point i was so into the movie yeah and yeah. i was watching it with my mom we were both like oh my god i have to go to the bathroom and neither of us would get up because yeah. it was just like so good <laughs> yeah <laughs> it locked you in yeah it's yeah we were like we so don't want to miss what's happening else we have to pee yeah. <laughs> That, yeah. Well, that's good to hear because that, that is something that tends to keep me away from from religious mm -hmm. movies because yeah. oftentimes they're not well produced. No, I, I I agree, and I always worry about that. And there's been some that I've been really let down on. Yeah, I, you know, I will say the feeling I got after watching this on the cinematography and the the way it was artistically represented, I got that after the Passion of the Christ too. I was like, this yeah. was so well done. But it was Mel Gibson, so you kind of expected right. it to be well yeah. done. Right. Whereas this, you're like, I didn't expect that at all. Like, yeah. I'm so glad yeah. it was well done. One of the critiques I heard before I went to see the movie, some people were saying, they didn't mention Jesus enough. They didn't show enough of uh, her prayer life and mm. what she was doing oh. in her prayers. And I thought, well, let's go see. I'm keeping mm -hmm. an open mind. The movie is two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much they could have put in. That's a very personal, private part of her life. Obviously, she was praying to accomplish all that Great. she was doing. But I think sometimes in some of the faith-based films, they can get a little too preachy, mm -hmm. and it turns people off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas okay. with Cabrini, you're drawn into this beautiful... Um, cinematography and view of what New York City used to be like mm -hmm. and how they brought you right into that period in history. Oh, yes. And you saw for yourself all the things that were up, stacked up against her and all the obstacles. And then you really appreciated how God's grace could only get her through these impossible situations. Yeah. And you see that for the two and a half hours, it just constantly draws you in and um, impresses you with what a great woman in American history and Catholic history um, they produced this film about. I no. totally yeah. agree. Yeah. I, and I think that the criticism that there isn't enough praying or Jesus in the movie is silly. <laughs> because um, if you watch the movie, it, there is there is praying. It's just not verbalized. I think it's done through her actions. It's done through right. her actions mm -hmm. when she is making her appeal to her sisters to to press forward in in you know in this new foreign place and when she's making her appeal to the Senate to allow her to help these people and invoking their souls and and what they're doing for the poor and and how they can she does it a lot for all the verbalized things are for other people but mm -hmm. then even going back to um her drowning it's every time that she goes back to that it's almost like she's saying like god gave me this new lease on life what am i here to do with it i'm here to do what he wants me to do and it, that's not verbalized but but i think that it's maybe better that it isn't so mm -hmm. that more people can relate to it because mm -hmm. we all have those moments where we're thinking about something happen happening in our past and and you know for for a lot of the faithful that is you know, in the form of prayer, but, you know, for a lot of the non-faithful, they, they do these things too, and, and maybe they are praying and they don't know it, but, you know, it's it's something that anybody can, can it's relatable come in, in that sense, yeah, yeah, it really is, and to Father's point, um, I did also hear that 
from some of people that had viewed it before me, especially because it had been out a week at that point, and they're like, oh, have you seen this movie yet, Carrie? It's really great. But, and I was really viewing it through the lens of, all right, I'm going to put that aside and just kind of make my own um, decisions on it and, and kind of come to my own conclusions. That didn't bother me one ounce. It didn't bother me one ounce because anyone, if you are Catholic and you see this work being done, you know they're praying. You yeah. know that their spiritual life is in check mm-hmm. because any Catholic that watches that or Christian should know that we cannot do any of this without God by our side, right. especially what she accomplished. So it didn't bother me one ounce. Actually, I was kind of glad that people said that to me because then I just dismissed it and just kept moving on yeah. watching it and enjoying it. I'm like, this is great, you know? And I was on just such a <laughs> such a high after watching it. It just, it, I walked out of there and I was like, I'm Italian, I'm an American, I am, <laughs> I'm a woman. <laughs> I want to be a saint like Cabrini. Like, literally, that's yeah, how I felt. Like, I vibe. just took so to heart, like, that, yeah. like, calling to sainthood um, and, and just trying to persevere through the difficult times in my own life, you know, because I, I live in a very different time, thankful for people like Mother Cabrini and her sisters and my ancestors who lived through that for me to have a better life here in the States and, and to be born um, in this country and have the, the many opportunities that I have. You know, it's interesting. I, it, I, it didn't even... It didn't even uh, pop into my head that there might be sort of like that that cultural factor from mm-hmm. the, from the Italian standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, but I'm like a quarter uh, Italian, and yeah, I know who met my great grandmother, and I, I did know. I am aware of history and how everything went down, and yeah, you know, what she had to go through when she first came mm-hmm. came over, and how difficult it was for her. Um, but it didn't occur to me that the, we would be seeing signs like that. It's a good reminder, mm-hmm. actually, yeah. culturally, and it sounds like. Um, you know, we have these conversations on the podcast regularly, um, depending on who we have on. But we have a lot of Catholic charities people, and it's, it's always relying a lot on Matthew twenty-five. And you know that that's you know it's the same deal. Like you know, mm-hmm. Catholic charities uh, doesn't necessarily. I mean, everybody prays and everybody does their stuff, but it's not necessarily that public part of the public facing part of their job. The public mm-hmm. facing part of their job is working with all of these people. Mm-hmm. Come to think of it, even with all the time I've spent with the CFR sisters down in Atlantic City. I don't know that I've ever actually prayed with them, mm-hmm. like other than like on the job while they're doing mm-hmm. something. Like, but yeah, I mean, their their grace and their charisms come forward without me mm-hmm. ever having once seen them pray. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're very pray- prayerful looking, and they're very you know kind and everything you would see. But yeah, I don't I don't know that I've ever actually yeah. experienced their prayer life. Mike, you should go to the uh, Father Benedict House one time because. That's, I've been to the Father Benedict House. No, but serve there because at the end they do the the midday prayer. It's just really <laughs> nice, and you, you have an opportunity. It is really beautiful to experience it. I've gotten to. But to your point, yes, that's not what's on the outside. That's not what we're seeing. We're seeing mm-hmm. the good works, but we know because they are prayerful, and that's really if you look at it through that lens. And anybody that is hesitant, because maybe they heard those comments, because they're they're definitely more prevalent. I've heard it in a lot of Catholic circles. Just look at it through the lens of like she's doing this work because she is praying. Yeah, and. Mm-hmm. and you'll be fine um, but I do want to hear each person's favorite part I do like to hear what stood out oh, you know, to well, you were you going to say something oh, well, I'll, I'll say I'll say something when we, when oh, we okay, go okay. Okay. I kind of I do have like maybe one and a half criticisms of the movie if they did like one and a half things differently it would have been maybe perfect but uh, I'll talk about that when we go around oh no you oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. and then you can give your favorite <laughs> part yeah I'll yeah. give my favorite part after so um, you know, it, it isn't without any fault. I, one thing I would have, this is maybe the half part, I would have loved, I would have genuinely loved, there's this character, um, her name is Vittoria, she's mm. a, a prostitute, and she, at the very first, when they first land on the shores, they first get to Five Point, she helps the, the sisters in a tough situation, and it, despite herself, despite, you know, her lifestyle, and despite the, the danger that she could face by by doing this thing and slowly throughout the movie she she comes um you know and 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 there's this lovely thing that they do where they they make her wardrobe more modest throughout the movie and she has her Mm. whole little conversion just through the witness of the sisters essentially but i would have loved to see her go to confession you don't have to like hear it just like see her walk into a confessional and just have that one little bit in there and i think that that would have made it you know, just just that much better. Um, and then the the thing that I don't like that's actually in the movie is 
there's a point in time. It's it's interesting that with the Italians, uh, a lot of the contention is racial, uh, but against uh, like with with the Irish in, in power, and so you've got some Irish characters who are like, oh, you know, I remember when we were being oppressed like you guys are. And, you know, some Irish that are now that they're in positions of power, they're just like high on that. And so that's kind of interesting. But there's this point where the the bishop is um, in a meeting with the mayor Mm -hmm. and the mayor is basically asking the bishop to to engage in shady politics. And if basically the the informal agreement is that if the mayor drink or if the bishop drinks the bourbon then then they're sort of in cahoots and then he did drink the bourbon and i thought that was a little strange i, I didn't like that i didn't like that at all I, I would have liked to see him like put it down and walk away and like have a little mm. backbone but um my favorite part of the movie um oh that's that's hard uh there's there's so much good in the movie but i do like um a couple of things so so Cabrini has this like totally unchecked ambition <laughs> and that yeah. causes her a lot of problems. <laughs> and I thought it was interesting how every time that she was like going against the bishop or, you know, trying to essentially disobey a, a direct order from her superiors, things didn't work out for her. Mm-hmm. But I just love the characterization of her because I, I talked to a seminarian who like seriously read her like readings and uh, her writings and stuff, and he was like, "That's exactly how she was, right? Like she was just this totally ambitious, borderline unreasonable character, and it really worked out because she just had this incredible faith. And and a lot of the movie is like the male characters who men tend to be more, um, uh, you know balancing the the risk reward thing and Mm -hmm. she's just like nope this is the right thing to do i'm gonna do it i'm gonna go all the way and so i I just love that characterization of her i thought it was really interesting and really fun and and it just colored the whole movie and made the whole movie enjoyable for sure i think that's what i loved about the character of saint francis cabrini in in the movie is her strong personality Mm -hmm. and to just answer your question what did i like about the movie everything about it but i was really um fascinated by her conversations that she would have with the mayor of new york Mm -hmm. and the archbishop of new york and they were telling her you can't do this you can't do that we're sending you back to italy Mm -hmm. and she worked within her limits like the she was obedient to the bishop but she found ways around Mm -hmm. to do the mission work that she felt the Holy Father had sent her to do. So she was saying, I'm going to be faithful to the Holy Father, Pope Leo, and I'm going to do my mission here in America. And these two men aren't going to stop me. I'll find ways around. Mm -hmm. And I love the way it would all work out, like just going and getting enough money. She wasn't allowed to ask for money, solicit funds, but she found ways around that to get this nice property in a part of New York that really <laughs> put it in Hudson. everyone's face that <laughs> oh, wow. you yeah. know, she was doing this work yeah. and the poor people were coming into that affluent part of town and then the bishop was telling them to move but she found, then they, they sent her to a property that had so many problems and mm-hmm. really wasn't a great place to work and she made it work. Mm-hmm. Everything that she did, she always found a way around mm-hmm. and that's how God designed her. I mean, that's mm-hmm. how she was the woman that um, was meant to do this mission and she lived up to her purpose. So that that's yeah. what really inspired me. Yeah, for sure. Because we all have our own sure. struggles and problems and our own era and, you know, people telling us you can't do this or can't do mm-hmm. that or you have maybe your health circumstance or where you were born or the language that you speak or whatever. And she didn't let any of those things. She just went with God and she did what she had to do. Yeah. 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 She was like a moral politician in a way. Yeah. Where she had to work with not only the church, but also the local government and right. and make things happen in, in that way. I thought that was fascinating, too, where she, she legitimately had to negotiate and, and at the same time keep her mm-hmm. her faith in, in, in the forefront. She really understood people. Mm-hmm. And she yeah. didn't have a degree in psychology or anything, mm-hmm. but she used psychology to deal with those children that had such broken family life or background and Mm -hmm. deal with these politicians and really amazing stuff that was accomplished in that and the fact that she was supposed to 
dying like less than five years coming to America because of her health. Mm -hmm. She lived way beyond Really that. interesting. She lived to be 67, I think it was. Wow. Yeah. yeah, which was way past what they thought she could live. Wow. Yeah. And she was buried where she thought she would yeah, be. Yeah, she said, I'm going to be buried on the land by the Hudson, and she was buried on the land by the Hudson. Very nice. Yeah. Which Funny. I highly recommend. If you ever have a chance, people listening to this podcast... Yeah, Make the so pilgrimage close. up there. It's yeah. amazing. It's really, and right nearby is this place called the Cloisters. It's a museum. They've taken a, a monastery in France and reconstructed it here in America. Mm -hmm. Beautiful artwork, but across the street is that shrine of St. Francis Cabrini, mm -hmm. and it's, it's amazing yeah, to I, see her body in the altar there. I never knew she was there, and it's, it's actually funny enough. When I first came to college, and I was met Father Mass here, and he, I said, "Oh, I'm from North Jersey, like right outside New York City." And like the next thing he said was, "Have you been to the Mother Cabrini Shrine up there?" <laughs> and I was like, "Nope." And to this day, I still haven't been. I'm shameful to say. So definitely on my bucket list now to go up there and pay a visit because I've taken her on in in my litany of saints and mm. really asking her intercession. Um, because I was just so inspired from this movie, so definitely want to go. Don't feel too bad. I've lived in South Jersey my entire life, spent many years in Philadelphia, and have yet to visit St. John Newman. And, oh, uh, no. and I know, everyone says the same thing. All right, we'll take you, Mike. You yeah. <laughs> um, Sammy, what was your favorite part? Um, my favorite part would have to be, I think she went in front of, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was the like the Italian Senate. Mm -hmm. And it's just yeah. like this big group of men and she just charges in and they're all like, get her out of here. And she's <laughs> like, no, like you're gonna hear me speak. Your people are in like New York and they need your help. And it was just, it was a really nice scene. Yeah. I like that. I like, it sounds like she's, you know, a formidable woman, as I mm -hmm. often like to say oh, yeah. about uh, people. Much like yourself, Carrie, a formidable woman. Try. One one who will not be denied. <laughs> we we got to do the work for the church and we know right. how to get it done. That's, that's right. That's how we work. I am well aware. I, d I wanted to get back to your two criticisms, though, because uh, it got me to thinking that I think you're absolutely right. That would have been a cool scene if we had seen the, the prostitute uh, walk into the confessional. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, well, I, think, I, think, I think that would also assuage a lot of the criticism, too, because, uh, <laughs> you know, in, in a two and a half hour movie, you're not going to show the entirety of an hour-long mass. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And but, the thing, and but, so many people. But are, you can show bits of the other sacraments too. Who knows though? Is it is it accurate? Did she oh, that's ever true. Go? She might Do not have. Gone. I don't think yeah, she's a real character. Yeah. Like I don't think she's a real person. Okay. So. Yeah. But uh, but you know, as someone Maybe who that's why who know. has yeah. difficulty with confession himself from time to time, and and there are certainly lots of Catholics out there that have a difficulty walking through those confessional doors. That would have been nice to see. Uh, but mm -hmm. to your other point about the bishop. Uh, being in cahoots with the mayor. Mm. Uh, well, hold on. <laughs> I'll just tell you. I was trying to just glaze over that. No, 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 no. Here's the, the, uh, that, is, that is absolutely what you refer to as um, Hollywood license right there. Yeah. Everybody, you always need a villain, and people love to make the bishop the villain. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that's pretty much well, what that was. I think it's interesting because it, it's even like written into the bishop's character that he's not the villain. Yeah. He he really genuinely does want to His help heart, Cabrini. Yeah. And, okay. and, but he just doesn't think that it's possible. He feels like he's between like a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. So it's more one of those like dangers of of you know, I, I heard it said once about like Judas that that in a in a strange way that he was just trying to like you know, make a little bit of money. He didn't think that Jesus would actually get caught because he's God. So, you yeah, know, why right. would why would he actually get caught and crucified and all mm -hmm. of that? Yeah. And, and then, you know, then they'd have a little bit more money then they could like, you know, go on their big tour of like the other cities in the area and, you know, everything would work out fine. But it's that like sort of in between if we just like hedge this one thing, then then, you know, maybe we could have something. It's like, no, you just need to do it what's what's right. And, and that's the danger. And we all sort of think like that. We're it's like if we just sacrifice this one good thing, you know, I, and I know it's not the right thing that but but maybe we could like have this this other, you know, sort of superficial benefit from it. And, and you know, that's a danger that we all fall to because it's not, you know, th the sins that are explicitly bad aren't the ones that always get you. It's the ones that seem good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. you're right. The devil works. That's for sure. That is 100 percent accurate. 
Well, listen, I you have all encouraged me to go out and see this movie, uh, or mm-hmm. at the very least, see it when it comes out on streaming. For sure. I can't tell you the last time I've actually been to a movie theater, which which is a bummer to me because I love going to the movies, and I, I want I want the I want the movie theaters to exist, and I, I think it's uh, I think it's a great way to see something in a community, which is mm-hmm. another thing you don't get to do when you're in sc- streaming. You get to see it with other people, yeah. whether whether yeah. you fall fall asleep next to your best friend, or you watch <laughs> it with your mother, or you watch it with your fellow uh, Newman House folks. Uh, I do hope people will go out in a group and see it because it sounds yeah. like it's outstanding. And uh, I gotta say, Angel Studios, I'm gonna have to like look look them up a little bit if they yeah. if they produce this and the Chosen and the quality of it is both so well. I I don't know, maybe I they need got to. got some other ones. They had a lot of previews investor. before, so they have some other ones coming up for well, sure. Um, and, and we tip our hat to you, Angel Studios, for putting out Cabrini. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, really good job, quick, everybody. Before we're done, I have an actually a really interesting connection to Mother Cabrini. Oh, what's that? that? So when I was going to go like go to the movie, I was going home to tell my mom like, hey, like I need money for this. She was like, oh, well your great grandmother loved Mother Cabrini. My great grandmother was actually born five months before Mother Cabrini died, same year, um, or before yeah before she died. She was 21 when she was beatified, right around where she like had my grandmother. My great grandmother loved Mother Cabrini. She had um, a statue of her on her nightstand. She prayed to her every day. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. She's like, Sam, we have the statue of Mother Cabrini like in our house from your great grandmother. I was like, oh, I didn't know that because my great grandmother was born in Poland oh. and she was an immigrant to America, as was my uh, great grandfather. So beautiful. I love yeah. personal connections. So that makes me very yeah, happy. I didn't realize it. My mom was like, Sam. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> well, thank you for including that. I appreciate yeah. that, Sam. Very good job. Well, thank you all for joining us. This was absolutely wonderful. You're all welcome back on thank the you, podcast Mike. anytime you'd like. And uh, be, feel free to be our um, our permanent reviewers for all future Catholic movies. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll call you in good. every time. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. God okay, bless. Thank you. You thank too. You. Bye.